Good morning, everybody. How you folks doing today? All right, we've got I think just one thing on tap today. Slide this down here. So as we're working our way towards wrapping things up, we'll talk about Project Three today, our little uh, movie theater ticket management system. And then I think on Thursday we'll talk about the annotations and design patterns. Because we had that, nope, not that one. Desire to learn. This one here. So we are about near the end here as we work on our final project. I want to make sure you get some time to be working on that one. Let's see. There we go. Yep, so uh, Thursday, we'll talk about annotations and design patterns uh, next week. And the following Tuesday, I've got set aside just for final project work time to meet with you folks and figure out um, what you need to do to get moving on this so that you're not stuck on anything. Right, because that's the goal. So that's what we're working on for all of April. Here is this final project. And hopefully when you're done with it, it's something you think is kind of cool. Um, you know, you know, it's actually a playable game at that point. It should be, um, and you know, Yahtzee's not the, the worst game in the world to play. I don't know if you've actually played before or not, though, but um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun game. All right, so we fire up IntelliJ, and we'll see if we can't get this thing working for Project 3 here. So we'll need to make the database for theater, and then we'll add our table for ticket. We'll have our our fields, and then we'll have a way for the user to pick, enter their name and the seat number, see if they can reserve it or not, give them a confirmation code, add the row to the database, add a way to return their ticket, uh, and then a, a report that displays all of them. So we're not really doing the update here. Uh, we're doing an insert, we're doing a, a read, and we're doing a delete. Um, so really, like, you'd return your ticket rather than update it, I think is probably our what our workflow would be for this. So let's start with a new one. We'll do a new JavaFX project here. This is for 2151. Uh, there we go. Project 3. Excuse me. And then we're going to need to go and take some database code. Let's pull this one up here. We'll do our databases in IntelliJ to grab some of this. So we need to know what our database name is here. Uh, but the difference is this one we did was just using a little loop in main for what we wanted to do. Right. What do we want to do with these here? So we need all of this to happen on buttons now. So we're going to build out a UI here. So just a couple things to change. I'm going to get rid of the size here on this V box, and then we'll go open that one up. And again, usually in anchor panes, it's probably a little easier for us to work with here. Um, so let me go open this in Scene Builder, and we'll go change that one up a little bit. Come on, scene builder. There we go. All right, so I'll just get rid of that V-Box. I'll drag in the anchor pane. I can just put anything where, wherever I want it here. So if we're going to be entering some values, right, we're going to need probably a label to tell them what to enter, and then a text box for them to type into. Text field, that's right, text field. Um, so this will be for uh, name, and then this will be the name text box, or text field, sure, text field, and then on action nothing. We, we could do on action for text boxes, uh, or text fields. I find buttons are usually easier, because you don't know 
what what it is unless you're looking for like the enter character so we'll just put a little button in here and actually we need both name and ticket number so probably we'll do another label and another text box here text field one of these days i'll call it the right thing text field and this can be the ticket number text field this will be for ticket number number oops i got a little large there i'll bring that one over okay so you do name and ticket number and then this can be what buy ticket and then this will be our buy ticket button i think that's capital i yeah there we go now this one we need an on action so this will be buy ticket button pressed or clicked right sure and then we could also have a return ticket button here if we want it right kind of use that same ticket number there totally up to you um there's no no uh, necessary right way to do these so this is the uh, return ticket button Or if we wanted, we could do some sort of other list. I mean, we got a lot of choices for how we want to set this one up here. And we'll say this is the return ticket button clicked. And then we want another button for what? Something about show all tickets or, or something. So this is the show all tickets button. And when you click it, we'll say show all tickets button clicked sure so let's show all tickets okay so i think that that ought to do it for oh we'll need a place to display all those right we should probably put another label in here this is for probably blank right now and this can be the all tickets all tickets label there we go all right now i think we might have it all and we'll go and update our controller here Oops, uh, we gotta go pick the controller. So come back to Scene Builder, add the controller in here again. There we go, give that a save. Now let's see if it updates. Okay, and our Hello Controller now. So that other method is gone, we don't need that one. And then we just gotta add all of our imports. These things here. There we go. So, we need to insert a ticket, we need to delete a ticket, and we need to read all the tickets. So probably reading all the tickets is going to be easiest first. So I'm going to add a, a, a class here for ticket. So the ticket class then, sure we can add it here, will have some attributes. So it'll have a private string for the guest name, it'll have a private int for the ticket number, and it'll have a private int for the confirmation code confirmation code okay and then we need gets and sets for these things let's see so probably actually only getters right um here we're going to get all those values back out and then we want a constructor here then generate a constructor that takes all those values and then, you know what, I want one more constructor here that doesn't take a confirmation code where I will generate a random confirmation code. So if you don't give me the confirmation code, we can generate one randomly. We can say our confirmation code is equal to math.random times, now we want a range from 100,000 to 999,000, right? We want a six digit number. Where's our, this one here? A six digit number, right? So. What I'm going to have to do is go to how far apart, how big of a range this is here, right? So what is 999999 minus 100,000? So really what I can do is I can take 900,000 here. Remember, math.random won't give you that max value. will never give you a 1 here. So I can do 900,000, right? So take math.random times 900,000, 
and then really I want that as an integer here, and then I want to add 100,000 to it. Because it could be zero, but it'll never be one with math random. So if it's never one, then I'm probably not ever getting, I'll never get 900,000 as an integer value when I do that plus one, or, or then plus 100,000. So this should give me a number between zero and 899999. Um, yeah, if you did 899999, that's fine too. You just wouldn't get the 999999 possible. Um, because you're never going to get that uh, the one with math random, but not not very important there. Okay, so this will give you the random confirmation code, or this will let you tell me what the confirmation code is, like if I'm reading this out of the database. So in my controller, I need a way to read all these values out. So I want a private uh, array list of type ticket here. Let's uh, read tickets from database. And yeah, we'll add our import here for that. So here's where we're going to go borrow some code. So the first thing we want to do is, let's see, this was the get items from database here. And we'll go and have that common URL. So this one can be our URL here. And we don't need that method name. Okay, can we get it all in here then? That's too many. Okay, there we go. So what do we want to call this database, right? How, I don't know, project three, that DB? Doesn't, the database name doesn't really matter so much. Shady, what doing what like this in the form of an interface? Like adding the, the UI portion? So there's our ticket, and then we'll make a connection. We'll add our imports here. Oops, uh, that's right, so we need to add our reference to all the SQL stuff. We'll go to our file and project structure and go to is it libraries. We want to add a library from Maven here. And we'll find org.serial.sqlite, uh, I think. Oh, the ticket class. Yeah, that, that'll make life a little easier there. Um, so, Tresaurus, I, you're, you're welcome to change it after, but when I go and grade it, um, I'm going to look at whatever version was submitted on time. So, like, if you go to GitHub, you can actually see, um, like, this will tell me the last time this file changed was 19 days ago, and I can click the history of the file, I can see all the different changes that were made to it. So, I'll go and say, oh, okay, here's the particular version that you wanted, or that, that was the latest and greatest one. So, uh, what I'll do for that. Let's see. I didn't find it. Okay, SQLite, is that what it is? Serial.sqlite. SQLite. Oh, what is it here? I'm trying to remember the right thing to type in here again. Don't want any of those ones. SQLite.jdbc. That might be it here. Try that one. There we go. So this one worked. I, I had uh, some issues with troubleshooting with some other people where the other versions weren't working very well. So this one, I think, was definitely going to work for us. That's what we did last time. Okay, and then I should be able to add some references here. Oh, come on. I don't want to create the class. No. Okay, maybe we, we have to write our own import, really? import java.sql.star so Think about it now, package java sql is declared in java sql, but module does not read it. What are you talking about? I think it's really confused. That's super weird. Um, so we'll call this, this is my ticket equals a new ticket. And we're going to have, so we don't actually have any of these things yet because we have to make the database. We're going to have guest name, we're going to have a get int of ticket number, and we're going to have an int of confirmation code. We'll have all those in a little bit here once we figure out why this is so complaining. Add, oh here we go, so add requires java sql directive to the module info. That's what we want here. 
Now that one works here. All right. So she'll add all this. Now we don't want to call these items here. This is really like tickets. We can, we can do better here. So let's rename a couple of these things. In fact, to rename, this is our, look at that, ticket array list. I love it. And let's refactor this one here. It's like suggesting words for me here. How smart is this tool? We'll call this tickets. I don't know. How about results? Results set. There we go. We'll do that. And then we'll make a new ticket. We'll add it to our ticket array list. We'll return the ticket array list when we're done. So this should at least create the database. And it's going to fail in a minute, right? Because we don't have this table. And then we'll go set up that table with our SQLite browser. But when we show all tickets here, let's let's pretend. We'll say, hey, I want an array list of type ticket. Call this tickets is get, uh, what is it? Read tickets from database. There we go. Read tickets from database. And then for ticket, ticket in tickets, let's take our all tickets label, show all tickets label. And we want to set the text. So we want to actually, at the start of this, we're going to start the text as nothing. And then what we're going to do is for every ticket, we're going to take the text of get text plus a new line here. Um, new line, there we go. Plus, and now we need to figure out a way to get this ticket as a string. So I'm actually going to add an override here to ticket to make life a little easier here. So I'll add the two string method here. Public string, two string. And we'll return, I don't know, ticket number plus the ticket number plus the guest, I don't know, plus the guest name plus the confirmation code. Sorry, let me scroll that down a little bit. Confirmation code. That's a little bit long here, but it'll, it'll probably be okay. Confirmation code. I'll return all that as a string and see how well that looks for us. And then we'll try ticket to string. We'll just try and add that in and see, see how well that works for us, okay? So do that when we click the show all ticket button. So that should set up the database for us the first time. So again, the first time you run your FX, you got to hit the little run from here, and then you'll get your run in the top right like we're used to. I don't know why they do that. So and it should go and create the file. Let's, let's try it here. So show all tickets. It should fail because there's no such table, but now we should have a Project 3DB. Okay? Life is pretty good so far. So that's working out nice. Then we can go play with our little um, SQLite browser. I think I've got that in my downloads, right? I don't think I ever put that anywhere else. SQLite portable. Here we go. Yep. SQLite browser. Here. Um, oh, I already have it installed. Okay, it's installed. SQLite browser. There we go. Oh, I was in the wrong spot. I'm sorry. I mean, if it, if it worked, that's fine. Um, it just, you know, so we want GitHub. Oh my goodness, why is this so crazy? GitHub. There we go. Sorting my name. There we go. CIS 2151 for the winter. Then we want it project three. And there's our project database. So we're going to make a new table. We're going to call this ticket, right? This was our ticket table. And we'll add some fields for, we wanted guest name. And we want that as a type of text here. And then we wanted ticket number as an integer is fine. And we wanted confirmation code. Oops. Uh, ticket number. And then we wanted confirmation code as an integer. And we want to write those changes to our database or save the database here. And so we got guest name, we got ticket number, we got confirmation code. Sorry, my sugar thing is beeping at me here. What is going on? I don't know why I keep yelling at me. Uh, okay. I'm going to replace my transmitter soon. Good to know. It's nice being part cyborg. All right. So now that should work now when we run it. it because there's nothing in it, but it shouldn't fail at least. So let's try that. Oh, 
Oh, uh, no such table item. Oops, did I, I didn't change something here. Oh yeah, select. We didn't change our query here. So we should say select, we want guest name, ticket number, confirmation code from ticket. That's the ticket table. Okay, there we go. So if our, our query is right, right, every column from the table here, let's give that a go. All tickets. All right, it does an error, but there's nothing to display. So we could we could fix that too. We could say, hey, how about if there was nothing, right? So we can say, um, how about if tickets dot size is zero? We'll set the text to no tickets found. Otherwise, less else. Here, we'll do this thing. What do you think? Okay, so now we need a way to buy a ticket. So if we're going to buy a ticket, we need to get their ticket number. We need to see if we've already sold that ticket. Right? So we need some place for a message somewhere. Or, you know, we got we got some choices here. We got, we got some options. Um, so we'll get the string for the guest name. It is going to be my guest name. Uh, name, name text field, get text, and then we'll have, now, I don't know if they're going to type in an integer, and I don't really want it to crash if they don't, so I'm going to start with the string for the ticket number string is my ticket number text field get text here, and then I'm going to try to convert that here. So we're going to try converting it, so I'm going to have an int for ticket number here, um, Uh, we need it? I don't know if we need it right there. We'll put it inside here. So we'll try and assign that. So we'll have a ticket number is integer.parseInt of the ticket number string. Maybe we can just even get it right out of here. Um, you know, probably don't even need to save it here. We'll save, save ourselves one line. We'll say, okay, let's try that. And then we're going to catch a, was it a number format exception, I think? Number format exception. And then if that happens, what I want to do is I want to take the ticket number text field and I want to set the text to please enter a valid number. So if they give me a bad number, I'm going to change the text that's in there. Just an option. You could display it in a label. You could do all sorts of things here. Um, whatever they had in there was probably bad. So I'm going to just change it here. They're going to have to go and erase it. And maybe that's kind of annoying. So maybe an error message is better, but... Uh, this is just one option. But assuming we can get the number back out, right? Then I need to go get all the tickets. So I need an, uh, an array list of type ticket. Array list of type ticket uh, is tickets equals read all tickets from the database. And then I need to see if this ticket number is already in that list of tickets. So I'm going to say for ticket ticket in tickets. If the ticket dot get um, ticket number is equal to the ticket number, then something bad happened. So I'm probably gonna uh, again maybe I'll just set this one here. We'll say that that ticket is I don't know that ticket number has already been sold. Sure, right? If I found one that matches, we'll do that. And then I guess we could probably even break out of the loop if we want. Usually I don't like breaks, but maybe that makes sense to break out of the loop here. Um, yeah, maybe not. But let's 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 uh, let's do another flag here. So we only want to sell them the ticket if we don't have a match here. So maybe we have a boolean for um, is unsold, and we're going to start this off as true here. And I can say while is unsold, right? I can do something. Mm, I don't even want to do a while. We'll just say um, we'll set that text, and we'll say is unsold is false, and then we can break out of the loop, I guess. So we'll say okay, just set the little flag here. 
say, okay, we're assuming it's unsold. Or how about can sell? Here we go. Can sell. Does that, that read a little better? We'll say we can sell it as true. If we find that matches, we'll say we can't sell. That's false. And then we can check, hey, if can sell is true, then I'll go and add their ticket. And I'll say a ticket, ticket equals a new ticket. Given the guest, guest name, given the ticket number, and I don't need the confirmation code because it will generate it for me here. Right? And then I want to go and add that to the database. So I'm going to add another public, uh, private, void, um, add ticket to database. Given a ticket, ticket. Right? Just like we did kind of with our items here. We had a little method for adding an item. So to add an item to the database, pretty much the same thing here. Let's give it a try. So now this is, we don't need this one. We're going to say insert into ticket. We're going to insert guest name, ticket number, and confirmation code. Values, question mark, question mark, question mark. We're going to go bind those things. Ticket dot get guest name. And then set int here, ticket got dot get ticket number and ticket dot get confirmation code. So I'll say, okay, the guest name is number one, the ticket number is number two, the confirmation code is number three. And doing them by order is a little bit funky here, but that's how this one works. It's not you know, going to be too bad for us. And then we'll try it. And if there's some sort of error, it's probably not best to print it out because no one's going to see the console here, but it's okay. Uh, we, could, we could set that somewhere else. Um, I guess we'd set the text of something. How about we'll do um, ticket number field dot set text. Why not? We're setting it for other things, so we'll set the text to the e dot get message. Whatever that exception is here, we'll set the text to that. Okay. Probably should do something here too with our our errors, but that's okay. We'll we'll come back to that. We could set that, I guess, all ticket. How about all ticket label? All ticket label set text to the eGet message. Okay. Next, we should be able to add a ticket. And then to delete a ticket, right, we're going to do pretty much the same thing here, right? Um, we don't need the guest name at this point, though. All we need is the number. So we need some sort of uh, a valid number, right? Is fine. We don't need the ticket here. And then if it does match, then um, it's found. We don't actually even really care if it's found or not, um, which is interesting. So we don't even really need to go and read them out here. We just need to get the ticket number, and then we need to go delete the ticket. Right, so to delete something from the database, I'm not sure this one needs a separate method here. This one's pretty quick here. We can just start the delete here. So we'll say delete from ticket, where the ticket number is equal to something, and we'll set an int to the ticket number. So it's going to say, okay, go find the, where the ticket number matches. We don't need to do this by guest name. We can do it by ticket number. Hey, delete ticket number seven. We could do it by guest name, but if I bought two tickets, one for my wife and one for myself, and then I were to go delete them, um, unless it had different names in each of those fields, uh, we might be deleting more than one. So ticket number is probably better here. Excuse me. All right, so let's try it. So show all tickets. They're empty here. No tickets found. So Eric, ticket number... One, let's buy a ticket and show all tickets. Uh oh. It didn't do anything. Buy a ticket, show tickets, buy a ticket, buy a ticket, buy a ticket. Well, it's not failing. Oh, I still have a button here. All right, well, something's not quite working, right? Let's see. So, first, I want to fix that that this says button here. So, this is, this was going to be a return ticket. Let's see. Get our controller. 
So something must not be happening right. Where? Hmm. Because we can read all the tickets. That's fine. We'll definitely do that. Oops. That was too far. Um, I'm using that URL here, right? For our connections. Make sure we are. Connect to the URL. I think that's fine. We don't actually don't need the metadata there, right? Get rid of that one. We'll make a statement. So let's see. Buy ticket. Get the text field. Try and parse it here. If can sell is true. Oh, I never added it. Uh, that's why. Add ticket to database given the ticket. Yeah, that would be helpful. Actually, need to call the add ticket line. All right, let's try that again. So, Eric, ticket number uh, one. Let's buy ticket and show all tickets. Oh, okay. So it's going a little far off the screen here, so might need to make that a little bit larger here. Um, so we could just make the anchor pane a little bigger here. Our anchor pane, just kind of stretch that out a little bit. Sure. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it'll be okay. Let's try that. And now that ticket should still be in the database, right? And that's the great thing about storing stuff in a database is that it exists outside of the application running. And now let's say, okay, Eric, let's buy ticket number one again. It says that ticket number has already been sold. Okay, so those text fields probably need to be a little larger. Probably need to use some sort of error somewhere else, but that's okay. We'll do, how about, let's buy a ticket for Jasmine. She can sit in ticket number two and show all tickets. So probably when we click buy ticket, we should update that show all tickets again, right? Here's our um, return ticket, add ticket, buy ticket, show all tickets. So we pretty much want to do this thing here. And I don't have to pass it an event here. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to just turn that into its own method. So I'm going to say refactor extract method. This is show tickets will be the method here. So we can call show tickets from these other methods here. Happy Blur's Day, my friend. How are you doing, White Paladin? So we'll add the database and then we'll show all tickets. And then We'll return a ticket, and then we'll show all tickets. Making sure they update here. We're having some fun with SQLite and Java. There we go. Do you want a ticket here? Why Paladin? Uh, let's buy you ticket number 42 here. You can come to the, the, the party. All right, and then let's go and delete a ticket here. How about we return a ticket? And that one goes away. It's just me and my buddy White Palette. We're going to the, the, the show here, I guess. Exactly. The meaning of life. So I think we're interacting with the database. We can buy tickets. We can return tickets. We can show all the tickets. So we don't have an update. Again, that, that's okay. We didn't need an update here. Excuse me. Let's see how we did. So with the rubric here, we have a Java X. Java FX GUI interface with all the required buttons and fields. Right, we can add names and seats. We can buy a ticket, add a row. We can return a ticket, delete a row. We can report shows all the tickets purchased. I think we hit all of those. What do you folks think? Close that down. Close this one down. So now you don't necessarily have to do this stuff with that SQLite browser, uh, and that is kind of annoying here. There, there are ways to do this in database. Um, code to say, hey, if this table doesn't exist, please go create it. That sort of stuff is a little trickier, and I don't know if anyone actually took a database course yet, so we skipped it. Um, so, so please don't take away from this that this is the only approach to doing it. This was what was I felt easiest for us to go and use that SQLite browser to make our tables. You can run commands that look like this, sort of, that will go and create tables and, and do all sorts of really cool stuff with SQL. Um, SQL is crazy powerful and backs basically all of um, day to day life, modern life um, is stored somewhere in a database. So we're getting information out of, um, but we just don't, you know, we're, we're not getting super deep into it here. So I just wanted to look at the basic CRUD operations. You can create data, you can read data, you can update data, you can delete data. Yeah. SQL skills are huge for sure. Why Paladin? 
that's like when we would interview people, one of the biggest things I, I found new C computer science grads were lacking was any sort of database knowledge, which was crazy. Um, it's like literally everything's in databases today. So I don't know. I feel like that we, we need to update our CS programs. Um, Cause I think they only took one database class um, in the whole program, which is, I mean, sure. It, I mean, there's a bunch of things you gotta cover, but man, gotta do the database stuff. All right, so let me go with this, get this code committed here. You folks have any other thoughts, questions, or concerns? Hey, are you streaming tonight, Paladin? You can go check out Y Paladin if uh, you want a good time. Okay, fantastic. I know you, your schedule was uh, kind of up, up, uh, up and changing what I saw on Twitter, so... Yeah, go check it out. Um, maybe he'll beat Elden Ring one of these days. <laughs> uh, so here's Project 3. We'll commit and push that one for you for reference. And we can go from there. Someday, maybe. I know. That's, that's, which is awesome. Like I, I appreciate games that have enough content that feel like... I don't know. Feel like you got something out of it for real. All right. So that's about all I was going to go over today. I want to give you more time for the project, and then on Thursday we'll pick up um, a little bit about annotations and design patterns. Again, we've mostly done our annotations. We'll chat a little bit more about it, talk about design patterns, and that should actually wrap us up through all of our objectives here, which was um, overall architecture of Java applications, including how modules are compiled and executed in our Java runtime environment, we can build our modules and packages, the proper use of inheritance, composition, polymorphism, access specifiers, abstract classes, and interfaces. Um, look at static class members and describe how they're different from instance fields. Oh, this is all a while back. I illustrate the use of exception handling in user-defined exceptions. I think we've done, we, we talked about exceptions and throwing exceptions, right? Uh, basic stream input and output operations, buffered and non-buffered, including sequential and random file operations with text and binary content. We've done a lot of binary stuff. The sequential random file, um, that one's a little trickier jumping around. I don't think we did a whole lot with that. Um, using Java FX, GUI components with multiple layouts and associated event handling. Describe the purposes of Java, Java annotations like at override, uh, design documentation for programmer defined components, um, doing some like UML class diagrams. I think we did this with our first or second project, didn't we? We did, did a, a diagram here. And then talk about some common design patterns, singletons, adapters, and factories. We'll get to on Thursday. That sound good? I think we got through most of this stuff here, and we can go from there. All right, folks, that's all I got today. Then, uh, so we'll take the rest of this time to work on that final project, and we'll go from there. All right, if you got questions, thoughts, or concerns, let me know. Happy to, to hop on a screen share and get you pointed in the right direction. Yeah, for sure, Shady. Definitely. Yep, so uh, Project 3 is a good example. Uh, the database stuff we're not going to do for our Yahtzee program, but trying to build classes that will talk to our user interface and how do we, we interact with those is big. right? So we can have classes that do all the Yahtzee logic, and then the user interface just talks to those classes and uses the public methods. So uh, the, the goal at the end of that is that regardless of how Yahtzee is being played, right? the Yahtzee classes can be used by a console application, they can be used by a GUI application, it can be used by a web application, it can be used by a mobile application. We don't care, Yahtzee doesn't care how it gets used. So Yahtzee just has public methods that the user interface then, however we're interacting with the user, will then go and call all those methods and say, okay, hey, I want to roll these dice, or okay, I want to, you know, if I check some boxes to roll some dice, great. I'll do that. If I check a box to, to mark that I have saved, great, I'll do that. Right? The, the user interface needs to know what those methods are that it's calling from there. So definitely want to spend some time thinking um, through all that. And then uh, some ideas for scoring, right? You should be able to give it a set of dice here and figure out what all your possible scores are. So you need some way of, of generating essentially a scorecard given your dice. 
So whether or not you want a class for the Yahtzee dice that tracks additional things, like how many times they've been rolled, if you're holding them or not, it's up to you. Uh, I, I think that's probably easiest. Um, and then you can give the dice to the scorecard, and the scorecard can say, okay, well, what is your score for ones? Well, let me count all the ones. What is your score for two? Okay, let me count all the twos. Let me, what's your score for threes? Count all the threes. Those ones are the easier ones. Um, if you have a three of a kind or a four of a kind, it needs to look at all the dice and see if you have a three of a kind or four of a kind. If you got that, it'll sum all the dice. Right? If you have a three of a kind and a pair, that counts as a full house, right? And it would show 25 points on the scorecard for that. If you have one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, right? That's a small straight. That's worth, I forget how many points that one was off the top of my head, 30 or something. And then the large straight was 40, I forget. We can go look those up, but you want to be able to generate that. And then if you keep those things separate, it should be easy enough for you to test and verify that, yes, it actually scores correctly. Because if the only way that you can test this is by actually playing Yahtzee and like waiting to see if these things happen, you, yeah, it's, I mean, sure, that's good to play it here. Um, but if you keep everything separate, we could actually run some unit tests and say, okay, hey, scorecard, if I give you a one, two, three, four, five, do you give me back my large straight score? Right? Do I get a one on my ones, a two on my twos, a three on my threes, because there's one of each, that sort of thing. We've got lots of ways we can sort of design this and lay it out that'll make life easier for us. Okay? All right, cool. If you guys got anything else, let me know, and we'll go from there. Take care, everybody. Thanks for dropping by, my friends.